how much, how much have we gotten from our education that we have implemented it in our, in our uh, organizations, companies? Well, I'm not devaluing the, uh, the uh, I'm not lowering the value of academics. Yes, academics is very important. But it's, in today's world, it's not as important as it was once during the Industrial Revolution. And yet, our education uh, uh, system is highly focused on academics. Now, I believe that the educational train was really distracted from its original purpose. Because the term education comes from a Latin word called educo, which means to develop from within, not without. And we bring, for the past hundred years, we are bringing our students, putting them in rows behind tables, and feeding them information. What can we do about it? We can't wipe all the education and introduce a new education system because there's still value in academics. But we need to change the focus of our education to its original meaning, developing our children from within. Now, here today, there are fathers, there are students, there are uh, employees, there are senior employees. And how can we all work together to inspire change through education? Well, if I am, I'm not a father, but I'm a brother to a sister who's doing her high school right now. I never want her to focus on her results. Because once we finish university, and this is one thing that I have witnessed, once I finished university, I thought I had all I need to jump into the job market and do the best. But it was not true. How many of you has gone through professional development? Raise your hands, please. I see some hands, yes. What do you think? How many of you think that these professional developments were of benefit and it made you change the way you do your business and it also made you change uh, your productivity, increase your productivity and value? We all do. As a matter of fact, every time I go to an organization to conduct a training, when we assess the problems that are there in the organizations, most of the time, almost 95% of the time, it's not a technical problem. It's a leadership problem. And a leadership problem basically refers back to the character. It's a character problem. So it's a character development, development training. Almost any problem that we've seen in an organization linked back to character development. <coughs> So, what is our next step? How do we influence change through education? First, we've identified the problem. We know that there is a problem in education. Second, how can we be part of the solution? Because just like we said, a dream without action is merely a wish. How do we transfer from that wishing mode into action mode? Well, it's for all of us first to empower our children, our siblings, our relatives, whoever is going through the education system, to focus on his personal growth, not on his papers. How many students if anyone is a father, uh, a brother to a person who's in the schools, in the education system, how many, how many times have we told our children, our brothers, you have to score high? Well, as I see this, if my sister goes to school and she scores 100%, well, I know that system is not working right because the system did not challenge her enough and she went through it. 
As a matter of fact, the challenges become higher and higher once we go out on our own, when we get out of the education system. So we become more challenged. And the companies, the top companies, are looking for those who have divergent thinking when they are faced with problems, when they are faced with challenges. So the experts, the top, the senior directors of the uh, Fortune 500 companies are telling us it's not all about the information. The top competencies are divergent thinking, emotional intelligence, and change management. And yet our educational train is moving on the other direction. And it's feeding our children more and more information. Herbert Simon once said, information distracts attention. Hence, a wealth of information creates a poverty of attention. And I believe that by raising the awareness and taking action, each one of us taking action towards making a change, we can bring back the attention of education to its purpose, to its original purpose, and develop our children from within. Thank you very much for listening. Genius. But if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, everyone, it will live its life thinking that it's stupid. I was once teaching an English class to a new group of students who are in the lower intermediate level of English. And each student was standing up, introducing himself at the beginning of the class by saying his name, his age, and his occupation. Or educational level. So I was going to the students one by one until I reached to Abdulaziz. Abdulaziz stood up and said, my name is Abdulaziz, I'm 19 years old, and I have served 12 years in school. Well, I was too naive trying to correct him. And I said, Abdulaziz, you have reused the word serve in the wrong context. We usually say, I served 12 years in prison not in school. He looked back at me and he said, well, what's the difference? In both cases, people are behind closed walls doing things that they don't want. Hmm. But the only difference between prison and school is that criminals go to prison and everyone goes to school. I have been an educator for almost a decade now. And I had a wish, a dream, I'd say, to meet one student that would tell me, oh, teacher, I'm so excited to go to school tomorrow. Oh, I love school. It's the most beautiful place in this world. But a dream without an action is merely a wish. We all know that. So in order to start taking action, we need to look at when did the educational train went wrong? Let's roll back in time and look into the history of education. During the Industrial Revolution, education was introduced to the masses. So what, basically they, what they were basically doing was, they were taking children from factories off farms and placing them in behind desks. Industry, industries wanted their employees to communicate more effectively, and to develop numeracy competence. In 1825, the three R's were developed, where industries wanted their employees to have proficiency in reading, writing, and arithmetics. A hundred years later, standardized tests were developed, including IQ tests that we currently have. Well, after all this long time, we are living in a very rapid changing world where technology is competing with humans in the job market. And yet, our educational train has been traveling towards the same direction for over a hundred years right now. What is wrong? Where are we missing? What can we do about it? 
A survey was once made by the top 1,800 directors in the Fortune 500 companies in America. And they were asked, what are the top competencies that has attributed to your success? And the top three were divergent thinking, emotional intelligence, and change management. What is divergent thinking? An example would be to think of as many uses as you can for a toothpick. Some might list a few, some might list ten, and, but to score on a high genius level is to list more than a hundred use of a toothpick. An example could be, if a toothpick is ten meters long and it's made of steel and it's placed on the top of a building, it would act as a repellent to lightnings. So, in America then, they made, another, they made a divergent thinking test for kindergarten uh, students uh, several years ago. And the results of this test were wonderful. 98% of the students scored at a genius level. The test was redone about seven years later to the same group of students when they were in the seventh grade. And there was a huge turn down in the results. Only 5% scored at a genius level. That could tell us something about where the educational train is taking our students. Now, more than ever, we have built a culture around education where we judge our students, our children, by the grades they get at school. Parents crave the A grades and they compare their children to themselves when they were in school. They compare their children with their relatives, with their peers, with their siblings as well. And so the pressure uh, on the students on getting high grades is very enormous. And at this moment, they will do anything they can to go through it and get their results. Some might cheat as well. Where is this all leading us? Where is all this taking our children? We are actually conditioning our children for short-term memories. Because it's really obvious what students do after the exams. They completely throw their books away, most of them, as I know. They forget everything that they studied in the school at that year and enjoy their vacation. And once they come back to school, the whole process repeats again for 12 years until they finish high school. And then when they go to college, they go on the same educational train again. They're working hard to get the highest results. I had a friend of mine in college where we were, uh, I was doing electronics engineering and my uh, friend was doing computer engineering. And we had our, uh, an exam on the same day, so we got together in the weekend and we were studying our courses. We had two different courses. So I was, uh, as I was studying, I was looking at my friend, which was basically turning on the TV, turning on the TV, going out, coming back in, inviting friends in, having fun, and then they leave. So the whole weekend passed like that, and I kept on asking him, Ali, what's wrong with you? You've got an important exam on, um, on Monday, and yet you haven't studied anything. He said, don't worry, I got a plan, I got a plan. I said, all right, that's cool. And then towards the evening, the Sunday evening, he still didn't do anything. And then, as a friend, I had responsibility over him. And I had to go and tell him, Ali, now, you're really wasting your time. If, it, if you happen and fail in this course tomorrow, what's going to happen to you? You have to come all over again for another semester repeating your course. So it's better to study now than come for another course. He said, don't worry, I have a plan, Adam, don't worry. And then he left out the house. He came back about an hour later. 
and he was holding a bag with all the architectural equipment. The long ruler, the triangles, the protractor, the big protractor. I was like, I don't understand, what do you study? He said, don't worry, I got a plan. And then he rolled down the big paper of uh, the, the, the drawing paper on the floor, and he said, this is the plan, Adam. Now, I want you to really help me on this one. You see, all the information I have in my books here, I'm going to copy them down here. And we're going to work together to make them all in a small notebook that I will take with me to the exam. Hmm. I was like, all right, well, if that's what you're looking for, I'll help. So, so we worked for the next four hours on making all those plans. And he took the paper, we both went to our exams the next day. And the, uh, later that evening, I met Ali again. I was like, Ali, how was your exam? Did you manage? He's like, no, man. The, the, the teacher was all over me, man. He was standing all the way, all the time there, and uh, I, I couldn't. I was like, too bad. I told you to study. That doesn't work. He said, but I tried. I saw what I could. What's surprising about this story was, a month later, when I asked him how much did he score in that specific course, he scored a B. That was really surprising. And as I looked into the situation, I realized that when you merge your subject in an activity, when you put your subject into an activity, it really and for uh, uh, makes you use your kinesthetic energy, you're moving, you're doing something that you enjoy, something other than sitting behind the table and reading your books. And using more of our senses when we're studying, it gives us more absorption of information. So that was a technique I use with my students all the time. Because I see a lot of them that come prepared to cheat. So a week before the exams, I tell them, listen everyone, it's okay, if you want to cheat, it's fine, you can cheat, but there are rules to cheating. And I'm like, what? Like, this is what we're going to do. Everyone will sit down in, in small groups, and you're going to list down everything you studied, and put them, the, put them on a wall. Chart everything you studied. And then they do that. And what's surprising is that, during the exam day, no one bothers to raise his head and look towards the wall because they worked on it. Now going back to our educational training, when we look at our own education, how much or how relevant is it to our own success?